So to start with, let's talk about the purpose of public folders. It was first introduced as a many-to-many -many collaboration tool. This provided a shared inbox, so to speak. What that means is those with permissions could view or view and contribute content to the folders. And public folders can pretty much contain the same information that you have in your inbox. They can contain contact information, calendars, threaded discussions, email message archives, documents, and much more. But what happened, as you can imagine, is public folders became the dumping grounds for all sorts of information. Over time, organizations allowed their public folder environments to just grow out of control. And then as various versions of Exchange were released, instead of trying to adjust their public folder structure, companies just migrated unneeded, out-of-date information from one version of Exchange to the next. And the thinking was, well, disk space is getting cheaper, so what's the difference? If I have an unwieldy public folder structure, who really cares? Disk space is cheap. But there are actually two reasons why you as an exchange administrator should care about this. First of all, because if you're setting up a public folder structure from scratch, then you can do it properly. You can do it right. You can do it in a way that it mitigates the growing out of control phenomenon that we've seen with the public folder structure in the past. The second reason why it's important to do it right if you're going to use public folders and you're going to set this up relates to planning for the future of a move to perhaps another type of solution like SharePoint. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Now as an administrator, if you want to establish a public folder structure right from the beginning, the first thing you need to do is create a public folder database. So we're going to go through the process of creating that public folder database and you'll see that it's not really very difficult. It's no more complicated than creating a mailbox database, but a public folder database is unique and separate from your mailbox database. The next thing you'll need to do is establish the public folder structure. Now as an administrator, you may be responsible for establishing the initial setup of folders, so the top level hierarchy. But from there, others typically have permission to create additional folders within and that structure tends to grow. It tends to grow right out of your control. And that's a good thing on the one hand because it's something that you don't want to manage. As an administrator, you probably have a million other things to do, so you want the public folder structure to take on a life of its own and grow. But it's very important that those who have the responsibility and privilege to create additional folders, to add content to the public folder structure, well, they need to have good guidelines in place so that it doesn't get out of control and make it more difficult for your organization in the future to move in another direction. And last, if you have additional mailbox servers, then you can create replicas of your public folder structure. You can create replicas of individual public folders. And what's good about this is not only the redundancy of those folders, but also the fact that you can put replicas where individuals can access that information a whole lot easier. So you typically think about replicas when you consider long distances and putting that information closer to the people who are going to access it. You don't necessarily have to replicate the entire public folder database to multiple locations, but certain portions of it you may want to replicate to other servers that are perhaps geographically closer to the individuals that are going to be accessing those folders. There's a lot of planning involved, obviously, in order to make all of this work smoothly. Now you might be wondering, why does he keep talking about setting up a public folder structure, but then he keeps mentioning um, moving in a different direction in the future? Well, public folders have been de-emphasized within Exchange. With the release of Exchange 2007, the Microsoft Exchange team explained that public folders were being de-emphasized. What the team said is, Microsoft will continue to support public folders in the next major release of Exchange Server after Exchange 2007. So that next major release, well, that's Exchange 2010. So public folders are still supported in Exchange 2010. Then they said, this means public folders will have full support for 10 years from release of the next major release of Exchange Server. Then they said, Microsoft will continue to invest heavily in SharePoint which has focused platforms to support discussions, team calendaring, and collaboration in Windows SharePoint services, and more mature enterprise content management with Enterprise Search in Microsoft Office SharePoint Server. So this gives us a heads up that we have a limited time to continue to work with public folders. Yes, they're being supported. They're supported in Exchange 2010. 
they may not be supported in the next release of Exchange. So even though there may be 10 years of support for public folders with Exchange 2010 going forward, that doesn't necessarily mean that if you want to keep up with the technology that you'll be able to work with the next version of Exchange and have public folders included. So your mind may be racing and thinking, okay, so I have to get things prepared to move over to SharePoint. And you may ask yourself the question, so why learn about public folders at all? Well, at this time, it may be just what your company needs. 10 years is a long way off, and you may want to implement a public folder structure, or you may have an existing structure that you need to continue to support. And that's okay, you don't have to stress too much about this just yet. However, the recommendation is, if you are starting from scratch, just go right to SharePoint. It's a technology that Microsoft is heavily invested in, and they've made tremendous strides if you look at SharePoint 2007 and SharePoint 2010. So you may have no desire to use SharePoint whatsoever, and that's fine. That's your decision. But if you're looking at this and you're saying, well, I'm eventually going to need to move to SharePoint anyway, I don't have a public folder structure to start with, then Microsoft is trying to encourage you to move in that direction ahead of time. However, there are a few factors that may help you to make this move to SharePoint or to some other solution in the future. So if you have an existing public folder structure, you might want to make some changes to conform to the recommendations that we have listed here. And if you're building a brand new public folder structure with that knowledge now that public folders are being de-emphasized, well, you can avoid frustration later by implementing good practices right here at the outset. So some of the important factors to consider is the hierarchy. Do you want to start your hierarchy with, let's say, location? So for example, in the case of Globomantics, there are three primary locations. There's New York, Chicago, and Texas. So you could have three top-level folders that relate to locations. You could also have top-level folders that relate to high-end departments. So how is your organization structured? That's really the key. You want to organize the public folders into business or project groups that will be relatively easy to work with going forward. The next concern is content. When considering a move to SharePoint, you have to think about the volume and type of content in your public folders, and that will impact how you approach the migration. So you have to think about what's in your public folders, what you're going to move over to SharePoint, and how you're going to structure that content out. The third thing is permissions. With public folders, individuals tend to own a public folder, and they may want the permissions on that public folder to follow over to their SharePoint list. So you have to consider what permissions exist. Now obviously, again, this is something that grows out of control in terms of who has permission to what. So you're looking at leveraging third-party tools to do this migration and to move over the permission structure. So if you're setting up public folders now and it's a brand new structure, keep in mind that the simpler your permission structure is, the easier it's going to be to migrate. And last but not least, naming. There are some SharePoint restrictions on file names, length, sizes, character restrictions. So those restrictions will affect public folders that are migrated over. They may also affect documents within the public folders. So that's something that you may not be able to control if you have an existing structure. The naming structure may be all over the place already. But when you're choosing a migration tool to move over to SharePoint, you're going to want to consider a third-party tool that takes naming into consideration. So we are going to take a look now at public folders in Exchange 2010. You're going to see that it's very simple to work with and it's easy to set up. Let's get started by going to our Exchange server and creating a public folder database. And then from there, we'll use the public folder management tools to begin creating our hierarchy. Now, in our case, we're going to build it out based upon location. And then within those locations, we're going to include various departments. The reason why we're doing that with Globomantics is because currently, the structure is that each location has a different branch of the business. So for example, the legal department is located in New York. The primary branch of the IT department is located in Chicago. And there's a services department located in Texas. So our structure will include all three of our locations at the top level. And then one level deeper, we're going to include those departments so that we can build a hierarchy that relates back to our organization itself. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so here we are on our New York Exchange server. 
and under organization configuration here we've selected the mailbox node and you can see in the actions pane over here on the right that we can choose new public folder database so if we select that that'll kick off the wizard and we'll give it a very simple name PF1 the server name is easy enough seeing as how we only have one server our New York Exchange server we say OK and click Next the database file path and log file path are automatically put in to start with logically you can change this if you want to put the database and log files in another location and typically that's what you want to do we're going to leave it here for now and leave this checkbox selected mount this database so that after the database is created it will also mount the database and then we click next we see a configuration summary and we click new so we see that the database has been created and now it's mounting the database okay and you can see here the PowerShell commandlet that's used in the background to create the public folder database and mount it as well we click finish and there's our new database now that we have this up and running the next step is to go to our toolbox and you'll notice here that we have the public folder management console let's open that up okay so here's the public folder management console it's pretty simple very easy to use and it's really a welcome tool that we didn't have with the RTM of Exchange 2007 in fact when Exchange 2007 was released without this public folder management console the only way to administer public folders was through the exchange management shell so this was frustrating to a lot of exchange administrators because exchange management shell was new PowerShell was new and now here you don't have a GUI console for public folders that had people pretty upset so with service pack 1 of exchange 2007 they gave us this public folder management console and it's nice to see that it carried over into exchange 2010 you can see here we have default public folders which currently there are none and then there are system public folders which include eForms registry offline address book schedule plus free busy so we won't worry about these for now as far as explaining what those are all about if we look at the default public folders there's no items to show in this view so we're going to create the public folder hierarchy here let's take a moment and go back to the slides and let's look at the hierarchy that we're going to plan out because obviously after the serious conversation we had about establishing a hierarchy you don't want to rush through this process it's something you're going to have to sit down think about perhaps discuss with a team pull in others that you have to consult with and map this out properly okay so for demonstration purposes we're going to build out a public folder hierarchy for global mantics there are a variety of different methodologies that you can use for accomplishing this for example you can go with a location department team project type of methodology or you can mix this up you can have it structured by department first and then locations you can have it structured by teams it's completely up to you and that's because each company needs to find its own methodology for creating a public folder hierarchy and permission structure now with Globomantics we did a little bit of research we looked into the various locations and how the departments are structured and it seemed easiest to structure this out by location so here our top level hierarchy is going to be New York Chicago and Texas and then beneath each of those public folder structures we're going to have legal IT and services okay so now let's go back to our exchange server and let's see how we would set up this structure here we are back on our New York exchange server and we're looking at the public folder management console and here we can see we have nothing set up so far there are no default public folders so if we look over here to the actions pane we can kick off the new public folder wizard and you can see it's pretty simple all we have to do is type in the name of the first folder in the hierarchy which in this case is just going to be New York 
and we'll say new. Okay, now what's interesting about this is again it gives us the exchange management shell command and obviously if you're going to create a lot of these you may want to use the PowerShell command to script it. In our case we're only creating a few so there we have New York. We'll create Chicago. and Texas. So we'll leave the public folder structure as it is, but if we wanted to create subfolders within these, we would go to each one of these and put in our subfolder. So for example, New York, Chicago has the IT department. And Texas has services. Now one of the things you might notice over here on the actions pane is this option here to mail enable the public folder. This is a personal choice depending on your organization if you want to enable some of these folders as mail enabled and what that will mean is you will then be able to not only post items to the public folder but you'll actually be able to email the public folder. It will have its own email address. Now that may be something that you're interested in doing, it may not depending on what your uh, structure is. So if you're interested in mail enabling a public folder, you can click this link and follow the wizard there. Let's take a look at a user account through Outlook 2010 and let's see how the public folder structure works for the average user. Okay, so here we are on a Windows 7 desktop and we're looking at Outlook 2010. You can see here we have James T. Gray's mailbox and James is a member of Globemantics. If we click folder list, here you can see public folders. If we expand that out, all public folders, well there you go. There are the public folders that we created on the exchange server as an administrator. So now from this point, James, he can click into any one of these folders and he can read information or he can post information. You see he can click new post or new items and put that right there in the public folder. If he right clicks and attempts to delete the public folder you notice that he doesn't have that level of permission. He has the ability to add a new folder into the mix and let's say he wants to add a folder in called sales. You notice that he does not have the permission to create a subfolder under this folder. So this is something that the administrator would have to give him if he wanted James as a user to have the ability to create subfolders. He also doesn't have the ability to delete any folders or really make any changes. So by default, James has the ability simply to read the public folder structure. Now we also have a session of Outlook web app open here. Let's log in as an administrator. And you notice a little bit of a difference in the interface. If we click public folders, here we see all the different folders. And if we want to, we can create a new folder. And because the administrator has the right to do that, he can create folders and delete them at will. 